Uh, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Fulani. Hope we meet you well. Um, uh, the, the political season is, quite frankly, rolling. Uh, as you know, um, there's been something of a uh, alleged uh, cat and mouse game between the ruling party and the main opposition, what with the adjusting their timetables. And um, so uh, here we are. But to talk about that, because the stakes are very, very high, um, we, our guest this morning is Honorable Abdullahi uh, Bello, Honorable Bello uh, of um, Kogi State. He's a former speaker. Indeed, he's a former uh, acting governor as well. Uh, good morning to you, Honorable Bello. Uh, good morning, thank my you, brother. Thank good you. Good to see you. I indeed. Same here. Um, we're just looking at, um, because it's the only topic right now, you know, everywhere, um, the impending primaries, because we'll be knowing very shortly. Now, in your party, the uh, APC, um, people feel that, well, in all political parties, there will be intrigues, uh, but, uh, and there are also stakeholders. So that's what we want to talk about. Uh, first of all, do you accept that there are intrigues? And let me tell you... Um, thinking along those lines. Uh, for instance, you would have known me even before the papers uh, published it, but um, uh, the planned screening uh, of the ruling party, according to a leading paper this morning, of uh, former President Jonathan, uh, CBN Governor Amir Fiele, uh, for example, as well as um, people that have uh, pulled out of the race uh, at the instance of uh, the president saying whoever, need, whoever was going to contest should pull out, all those people are going to be screened. Uh, first of all, as an insider yourself, as a stakeholder, what does all of that mean? Well, uh, the intrigues in uh, in uh, intrigues in political um, arrangements is a normal uh, phenomenon, <laughs> and uh, if you may recall, uh, APC as a party. Uh, had to go through a lot of uh, intrigues before it becomes a political party in 2013-2014. So many alliances, so many meetings, so many, you know, hustles, and at the end of the day, uh, the party with all the leadership that uh, you know, come together to form the, uh, what we now call APC. And uh, if we may also recall, on our way to 2014 uh, convention in Lagos, there were so many intrigues, so many you know leaders in this country, uh, they, you know, you know, showed their interest to seek for the highest office in the land, and uh, it was full of intrigues. And uh, in Lagos, I could recall that night on the eve of the national convention, where, where uh, upon uh, uh, General Buhari, then as he was, uh, became uh, elected as our uh, flag bearer, there were a lot of intrigues throughout the whole night. Uh, which led to the uh, primaries the following day, and uh, he came on top. So we are used to intrigues in politics, actually when it comes to who gets what, how, and when. And uh, to the present circumstance that, you know, uh, face us as a, as a, as a party, uh, intrigues are, are ongoing. Uh, we that are original founders of the party uh, are well aware of the intrigues, but surely, we are used to it, and we shall, by the grace of God, overcome uh, the intrigues and come out uh, with a better candidate choice that will lead Nigeria into the next uh, uh, phase of our, our political life. Mm. Thank you. Uh, and talking about these in intrigues, uh, stories that have since been debunked, officially debunked by uh, the publicity, National Publicity Secretary, uh, that was not adding to understanding. It was a bit confusing. Talking about... Uh, Oh, the party, you know, this is maybe five days, six days, maybe a week ago. Uh, APC has zoned uh, the presidency uh, away from the South, you know, uh, away from the South. Uh, that has since been debunked, that there's no reason to do so. Uh, as you were saying, intrigues are not strange to politics, but it is confusing. Is it that... Um, the ruling party, like any other party, is not really interested uh, at the moment in, in, 
in, in having people understand particularly uh, how we're growing. And what are the dangers uh, to the uh, stakeholders in being plain, straightforward, and clear? I think, I think if I hear you well, though, if your, your, you know, maybe from your, the, your own end, it's very faint. And it's not, I, I wish you speak louder oh. or you increase the volume so that I can get to you very oh. clearly. Oh, oh, okay, I, I'm I sorry about that, but we can hear you perfectly. To me. We can hear you perfectly. I'm sorry that you can't yes, hear okay, me. I'll I... try to, you know, uh, be a bit louder. Uh, did you say that you didn't quite get my question? Yes. Okay, I, I, I was saying what, what are the dangers of being, um, shall we say, uh, plain and uh, straightforward. As straightforward, for example, as we have a revised timetable now. It has been revised. That was pretty straightforward. But there's so much, there's so much going on uh, internally. Uh, as I said, for example, in your party, the governor of Central Bank will be screened. Former President Jonathan will be screened. I believe that uh, uh, Mr. Adishina of AFDB will be screened. And all of these people have sort of indicated that they're not in the race. So I'm wondering uh, if they've, what's going on? This is part of the intrigues that you said is a bit, uh, is not uh, strange to parties. Uh, but the grounds, is it that, um, well, first of all, when you look at all the candidates, all the aspirants in there, is it dangerous to uh, be straightforward to the to outsiders, to well, non-members of the much. party? It, you see, you see, to to outsiders who are watching from far and as to what is happening within the APC. Yeah, uh, it's not. It doesn't baffle of. It doesn't baff, baffle all of us that are inside or within the party. Um, the people you mentioned or the names you mentioned are strangers to. To the APC family, and um, we within the APC family, you can see those who are, uh, uh, are serious about contest contesting the party primaries are going around the country, meeting our party faithful, our party leaders and party followers, asking them for the understanding and support. Uh, as we head towards the APC primary, we can categorize um, some of our presidential uh, Zoom presidential aspirants into three categories of people. One, those who are contenders, who are really seeking to contend uh, for the position of president of this country. And we have people that can be categorized as uh, pretenders, uh, that are uh, not serious, just you know, um, had the money to nom uh, pick nomination form and list their name as uh, being a presidential, a presidential aspirant. And we have those who are, uh, uh, are just spoilers. Uh, those who believe that they have the money to uh, constitute themselves uh, as a spoiler in the process. But then, having said so, we within the party that are members of this party since, you know, when it was uh, formed in, back in 2013, 2014, we know those who are serious within the party. We know those who have done good, who have contributed much to the party. And we are resolute behind uh, if we have a very free and fair a party presidential primary, we know who among these who has obtained a form that the party you know, leaders and party followers who wish and like to work seriously towards to ensure that such a character emerge as our uh, uh, presidential flag bearer in the 2023 uh, 2023 general election. Okay, um, uh, t t take the method of the uh, of the primaries, uh, for instance, you can go either direct, indirect, or consensus. Um, even if people are not talking about direct uh, uh, seriously, uh, but uh, indirect and um, consensus, uh, apparently within the party, no, there are those who also flew the kite of consensus, um, and um, you know, not everybody in the party uh, is down with that. Uh, what what would be your thoughts on on, on that particular uh, question as to how to go, uh, especially uh, when you look at uh, the reduced number of delegates and consequently delegates' votes uh, with the numbers of delegates now reduced to what? Uh, somewhere uh, in the region of, um, what, 2,300, uh, down from around 7,800 before. 
Uh, good. Um, if you, as I have earlier mentioned, if you recall to 2014 presidential primaries in Lagos, um, on the eve of that primary, there was a meeting consultation among the leadership of the party. Uh, people were asked to um, discuss the issue of consensus. Uh, but at the end, when all the aspirants then uh, refused to concede to each other, they were asked to go to the field. And they went to the field, and President Buhari emerged as, uh, as the winner of that uh, uh, primary in 2014 in Lagos. So it will not be strange if the matter of consensus is being discussed at this level. Uh, it depends on whether the, those who have obtained form will agree to step down for any of, uh, of his fellow uh, aspirants. So if in the event that one or two or three of them uh, still remain in the race uh, on the eve of the primary, surely we shall be heading to the field to elect who will be our flag bearer in the next election. As to the reduced number of um, delegates, well, we, we are preparing all along for a situation whereby if a delegates are about 7,000 or 8,000, as it should have been, uh, what are the kind of uh, things we should do uh, during the election? And we equally envisage a situation where this scenario, as it is now, could occur. And we are putting a lot of measures on ground to ensure that we have a very successful uh, presidential primary by the grace of God this weekend. Okay. So it is not strange. If the voters are one, we approach them in this manner that will have, you know, approach those who are in the multitude, if there are many. So we are talking all over, all over the country to the leadership of the party so to ensure that those who are designated as delegates uh, you know, know exactly what to do and to elect uh, the, those who have contributed much into the party to make the party so successful to this level. So we have done our best and we believe that our leadership across the nation and the followers of the party will listen to uh, our message and surely a better candidate will come out successful in the, in the convention by this weekend. Okay. Um, uh, Honorable uh, Bello, one second, please. I've got to do, go on a quick break. Uh, please stay with us, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and we're having a conversation with Honorable Abdullahi uh, Bello, former uh, Speaker uh, of uh, the Kogi State House of Assembly. Uh, he also uh, is a former acting governor, having uh, acted on behalf of his principal uh, in the past. Uh, so, uh, Honorable uh, Bello, back to you. Um, you. You said that the, shall we say, stakeholders, uh, you know, high-ranking officers, all of you have done your very best. It's now up to, you know, uh, the leaders to, not that you use the exact words, uh, do the right thing. But I wanted to come in on that. Um, because you have said in the past that one of the challenges you see facing us is that leadership is in short supply. 
Um, you said that in interviews in the past. Uh, I don't believe anything has changed. So I, I was going to ask, how optimistic are you that, um, you know, how, how optimistic can you be in the light of uh, that belief that you had expressed in the past? The problem of leadership in Nigeria. Yes, uh, thank you for this question, the issue of leadership. Um, leadership is key in all circumstances all over the world. Uh, even before democracy, we, leadership is key to the uh, development of any society, of any nation. If we take uh, the Asian uh, you know, issue, for instance, the Chinese, uh, the Americans, uh, the British, and uh, the French, or the Italians, or even presently, as we have seen, the Russians, uh, leadership is key. And uh, that leadership question has uh, you know, baff be, you know, befell us uh, since uh, uh, the time Nigeria, uh, Nigerians took over leadership uh, in this country. Uh, but then we have seen leadership that has excelled even when we have leadership question in the country. Take, for instance, since 1999 uh, till the present moment, if you come to Lagos, and you see democracy at work in Lagos, one will have known that leadership uh, has survived and, uh, and has excelled in Lagos State. And who will obviously have laid that foundation is um, uh, uh, Ahmed Bola Tinibu Asuaju, who has laid the foundation of leadership in Lagos. I could recall in 2012 when I came to Lagos as speaker to launch an, uh, the new uh, state assembly complex in Lagos. You can see leadership, you can see governance working, you can see all facets of uh, governance working in Lagos. And I made a statement that time that if democracy will survive, definitely uh, it will be based on the achievement that's been recorded in, uh, in Lagos. And uh, Lagos has not stopped uh, from its development stride. And it was as a result of leadership that has laid that foundation. And today, uh, it is good and I'm happy that we are talking about the issue of leadership and uh, Ahmed Bolatinibu is uh, alive and pointing to the fact that he wants to lead the entire country. Uh, that is why we are hoping and praying that such leadership quality can be replicated across the country if uh, my party and all the uh, followers if it's in the party give him uh, the support to emerge in the coming presidential primary so that what happened in Lagos ca can be replicated in, the, in this country. So mm. that question of leadership can be you know, uh, overcome once and for all in this country. Mm. We're staying on the question of leadership. Um, uh, the, the president is the uh, leader of your party. Uh, and in the past, I don't know if now still, uh, party members have complained about, um, as they put it, internal democracy. How big a sway do you think, one, the president has, two, is uh, ready to exert, uh, given your you know, closeness, relative closeness uh, to, to the system and the way it works. Um, you know, against this backdrop of uh, the problem of leadership within, I mean, uh, um, you know, uh, democracy, internal democracy within the party. Take, for instance, the way the uh, chairmanship of uh, your party uh, emerged. Uh, that was at, you know, clearly the president gave a nod and uh, things fell in the direction of his nod. You think anything like that might happen again? Uh, you see, the, the the danger here is that um, the, the emergence of our party chairman uh, is just within the APC as a family, and so if uh, the anointed choice of the Mr. President was supported to become uh, our chairman, uh, it's a manageable uh, matter within the party. But we are presenting a candidate. Uh, that the entire nation will have to vote for. So uh, it is in this direction that we all believe that uh, anointing a candidate uh, from a very narrow perspective we may not be you know, ideal and useful in the coming election. We must allow freedom of choice. We must allow the delegates to go to the field and choose for us whom, we believe, whom they believe uh, is a candidate that is celebrable to the entire nation. Don't forget that whoever emerged uh, at, during the party primary will have to seek the vote and support of all the states of the federation. So, and for now, within the party, the only candidate that has that connection, that, that has that network, 
that has built bridges across uh, the Federation, that he himself is a bridge, not even building bridge. He is still, still a man, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, that if you go to Enugu, if you go to Abia, if you go to Sokoto, if you go to Meduguri, go to Kano, go to Jigawa, look at his visit to Jigawa, what the governor of Jigawa said, that this man contributed a lot into him becoming the governor. What about Sokoto people? What about people in the south-south? What about people in, the, in North Central? Everywhere, people say this man has built bridges, has become a bridge that others have used to cross to their greatness. So that's to show that uh, such a, a man, if he's given the mandate to lead our party, has already done 50% of the campaign for our, our, our victory in the next election. So I believe that Mr. President, being our national leader, will allow all the delegates to go to the field to, uh, to elect uh, the choice of uh, the who will become our flag bearer, just like as we did in uh, 2014 in Lagos. You know, I, could, I, I have mentioned earlier that in 2014, all those who pick forms uh, from the president himself, Malaji uh, Abakaratiku, the former vice president, Kwam um, Kwasura Biu, former governor of uh, Sokoto, uh, um, Governor Korochad then, and um, later Azar and um, all of them, they all refused to step down. And we said, okay, let's go to the field. And we went to the field, and Mr. President, they might. So I see such a scenario, you know, uh, uh, playing in itself out in the coming uh, party primaries of APC. I don't believe that uh, forcing or anointing somebody, and you said, uh, you know, is the choice of maybe one person or few. Uh, I don't believe it will work out uh, because such a person needs to uh, have worked for himself all over the country, uh, the saleable, acceptable, and uh, leadership that uh, has uh, modern issue, I mean, modern you know, knowledge of uh, modern economy. Uh, so we are thinking of a leader that uh, understands how the brokenness of this country and how to bring the country together. We are thinking of a leader that to ensure that Nigeria has uh, pr prosperity and the unity of this country is restored. And uh, Bola Ahmed Ahmed Tinubu uh, is a symbol of such leadership. And by the grace of God, uh, we that are Muslims from northern Nigeria, uh, we believe that this man on many occasions has given uh, uh, all of us hope and as to aspire our, our aspiration. First and foremost, when um, Atiku seek uh, uh, to advance his political aspiration, Ahmed Tinubu gave him platform to run. When um, Nuri Batu Madama equally wanted to run for election, he gave him uh, the platform to run. And thirdly, even when the, the present president uh, seek to, learn, to run, he came with a very weak political platform with just one governor. And uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu had many governors then, but he considered and gave him the platform to run. So it is now our turn to say we want to thank him for all the good he has done to the people of the North. That is why you see great men from the North are supporting him today. That is why you see Kashimu Shitima, former governor of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Borono, uh, you know, supporting. That is why you see sitting governor of Casino State supporting. That is why you see so many governor of and Kano supporting. Those who remember, those who believe that Muslims should not be termed as ungrateful, as, an, uh, as if we are ungrateful, uh, it's a sign of ingratitude to pay bad with, for those who are doing good to us. We have resolved that whatever happened by the grace of God, we will give this man support he needed. We will leave everything to God. I will, uh, we shall have satisfied our own mind that accept, we have said thank you, Almighty God. You have given us the opportunity to thank this man. That is what this coming election means to us. And by the grace of God, he will emerge as uh, uh, the winner of the primary. So um, the president, therefore, um, is on point um, for not showing his hand one way or the other um, as he said back in the day um, when all of this uh, started uh, and reporters had asked him, I, I, I won't tell you uh, so that he will not be eliminated, whoever that, uh, he or she will not be eliminated, whoever that person is. So the president, as a leader, as the national leader, uh, is on point in not showing his hand. He's received everybody who has indicated an interest, even those ones that are a bit um, curious. You know, you know, uh, the president hasn't spoken against anybody. I'm speaking here about former president Jonathan. I'm speaking here about um, a CBN governor. Um, all of it, the president seems to be making sure that um, he's walking this political tightrope, uh, tight uh, perhaps as he should. 
Well, uh, you see, Mr. President is, is the father of all. He's the father of the nation. It's just like uh, in our various homes where you have more than one, where you have many children, and they, they, yeah, you have to show equal love and affection to all of them. Uh, our president has been a very careful uh, father and a very careful leader. <laughs> uh, he cannot afford to come and point you know, straight from the beginning that this is my choice. If you do that, you may not be able to bring everybody around such a choice into the election. So we thank him for his greatness. We thank him for his, um, for his, his quintessential character in this struggle. But all we are urging him to do is to allow uh, every uh, uh, part of him, all his children, all his followers who has indicated their interest to run for this office, uh, a level playing ground, to meet uh, at the Eagle Square and let him watch whom the party has uh, uh, decided to choose. And uh, it is there he now own up such, we now own up such a candidate and begin to converse for uh, the support of all Nigerians for the election. Uh, I believe the president will, will, uh, will be uh, a, a very nice and uh, accommodating father will allow uh, the principle of fairness to play at this critical moment of our, of our political struggle. To, so that whoever emerged, everybody will have seen that it was, he, he, such a person emerged to a very, very decent and acceptable uh, party primary. So that we'll have a very successful campaign and uh, win the next election without any you know, uh, difficulties. Uh, you know, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Abdullahi Bello. I think that's a, a, a fine place to leave it for now. Uh, hopefully, we can still have a chat uh, later on and uh, subsequently uh, from here. But thank you very much for coming on the program and sharing some of your uh, insights with us. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay, stay with us, please. Uh, we'll be right back uh, after this break.